Hi there. You've probably been assigned to uh, create a histogram and you need to know how big should your bin widths be. Well, I can't give you a formula. I don't think there is just a one size fits all formula for choosing bin widths. Um, but I would like to show you in this video um, some things that you can look for uh, that might show you whether your bin widths are too wide or too small. So what I did was I, um, I just generated 200 observations from, uh, from this distribution right here. So this is a, a normal distribution. It has a, a mean of 75 um, and a standard deviation of 8. So it's got that nice bell-shaped curve. Um, and I just drew 200 observations from this distribution. Uh, of course, in real life, you would never know the parent distribution, and you'd like to kind of get a you know a handle on what it might be, and that's why you draw the histograms. So, um, so this might be a histogram that you draw. Um, well, actually, I hope it isn't. Um, in this histogram, there's only two bins, um, which is kind of a crude way of lumping observations together. Here, it's basically observations below 70 and above 70. And, and maybe that's what you actually want, in which case this is the appropriate kind of histogram for you. Um, but if what you're really doing is a little bit more exploratory, like you're just trying to figure out what does my data look like, um, then this probably isn't too terribly informative, having a, a, a huge bin width, uh, in this case, a, a width of 30. Um, so what if we, we do 15 instead? Well, now this is starting to look a little bit more informative. So this kind of tells me that the, the average is probably somewhere around 75 or so. Um, it looks fairly symmetric, but not totally. It's still kind of hard to tell whether that's because my, my limits for where I start those bins have been positioned, but I'm starting to get a sense of shape from this histogram. If we uh, increase the bin width again um, to 10, well, now this histogram is, is really starting to tell me something. It looks like I've got a handle on uh, what a, a reasonable maximum value might be and a minimum value. Uh, there's a mode, there's that, you know, that, that peak in the top. It seems to be roughly symmetric. So the average is probably around here at around the 75 mark. Um, I like this histogram. It seems to, to give me some useful information. We can, we can keep doing this. And, and here, a bin width of five looks fairly okay as well. Um, we've got a, a number of bins. We've got, uh, let's see here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bins. That's, you know, a, a fair number. Um, but again, I, it's, yeah. I can tell what my data looks like. It looks like I've got, you know, a couple of observations that are a little bit less than 60, a small number that are almost um, or equal to 100, but that uh, most of my observations are somewhere in the 75 to 90 range. Um, and there still seems to be one mode, um, this one giant peak. This one right here is, technically speaking, a second mode, but I think just from looking at it, you can tell it's probably nothing to be terribly concerned about. Um, can't be for sure if you just have data, but um, that's just kind of how I read this particular histogram. Now, if we keep minimizing this bin size, make it bin width of one, which, which isn't a whole lot here in this case, yeah, you know, we might be overdoing it at this point. Um, I definitely have a sense of the data, but you know, is it really informative that there were no observations that were 64s or that there were no observations that were like, what is that, like a 92 or something? That's probably just random noise. Um, another way you can see that is you've got all these different modes. You've got a mode here, a mode there, a couple here, one here, one here, another one there, um, another one, another one. So you got like what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different modes. It's really hard to think of a case in life where you're mixing ten different subpopulations into one giant, you know, a group. Um, I, I just don't see how this is 
more informative than the previous one. It looks like we're starting to model a lot of the noise rather than underlying features in the data. So um, as a general rule of thumb, if you see you've got all of a sudden tons and tons of, of modes, like these unique spikes in your data set, you probably started to go um, a bit overboard um, on, on the number of bins. Uh, and just to, to play out this example, here's one where the bin width is, you know, ridiculously small. Uh, and in this case, every single observation is either that has like one value in that bin or none. But there were, there were no bins that were sufficiently broad where we had more than one observation. So this histogram, I'd say is pretty uninformative. It looks like a bar chart. Um, and yes, I can kind of tell how my data are distributed. They do kind of seem to cluster around 70, 80, uh, but it's really hard to tell. Um, I, I don't have a real good sense of what the average is. I don't have any sense of what like frequently occurring values are. Like it looks like maybe 72, maybe 82, but I can't be sure. Whereas this kind of tells me a whole lot more. So um, you really need to, to play around with your histogram choosing a bunch of different bin widths to see which, um, which histogram seems to indicate um, a little bit more about what your data look like and are informative to you and to the people you're trying to talk to when you're reporting your statistics. So um, play around with bin widths. Um, there is no formula. Just see, try to find a useful uh, bin width and take it from there. Thanks.